presenting today on whether a four-week intensive course of scoliotic therapy reduces the angle of trunk rotation in scoliotic patients. Okay? So initially, ATR is the angle between the horizontal and the plane across the back at the greatest elements of a rib prominence or a lumbar prominence. And for this purpose, we use the bundle scoliometer, which I believe is the most widely used for measuring the ATR. The importance of it and why we did it is because it affects rib and lumbar prominences. And various studies have tried to link ATR to cob angle with kind of varying degrees of success. But one thing that most people tend to agree on is that ATR should be monitored throughout scoliosis therapy. It's been shown to be a reliable measurement with good reproducibility and excellent intra and inter observer agreement. Therefore, we consider it an important clinical outcome measure in practice. <coughs> there has been some previous research which has tried to show how scoliosis specific exercises can reduce angle of trunk rotation in patients, and we've just gone and tried to push this slightly further. We essentially took a larger cohort than it has ever been done before, and we did it as a retrospective case series. Uh, we have 47 males, so it does try to represent the makeup of how scoliosis affects people in general. And we treated them between December 2011 and June 2014. Patients were aged between 8 and 76, and they must have had at least one curve with a rotation of greater than or equal to 5 degrees, as measured by scoliometer at the start of treatment. We did not randomise any patients. The method that we chose to use was putting the patient into a standardised seated forward bend position. We took their scoliometer readings at the beginning and at the end of their four week treatment course. The peak values of ATR were documented and we used paired t-tests to evaluate the difference between sum of ATR at the start and at the end of treatment. The results, as you can see here, generally turned out very positive. So, if you take the two degree angle of user measurement in with the bump scoliometer, we got clinical uh, differences in the single thoracic and thoracolumbar curvatures. Double curvatures were about 1.71 and 1.95 degrees reduction throughout the four weeks. And the interesting point I want to draw your attention to just at the bottom was that we had 13 post spinal fusion patients throughout in our study. Okay. We included these at the beginning and we weren't really expecting to see much of a change. However, even though it is only a very small group in there, we did see a reduction of 4.19 degrees to a clinically significant and statistically significant level. Okay? On average, we made an angle of trunk rotation decrease by 3.74 degrees and again, that is both clinically and statistically significant. I've tried to show this in the table just here. So what you can see is the double curvature on the left, uh, spinal fusion curvatures second in, then single thoracic and thoracolumbar curvatures before and after treatment. Our findings from this were that scoliogold therapy for this case series <coughs> proved effective at reducing ATR magnitude to both a clinically and statistically significant degree in single thoracic and thoracolumbar curvatures. There was also a statistically significant reduction in the sum of ATR in double curvatures, but the literature is divided as to whether this change was clinically significant or not, as it didn't reach the two degree user error. Our suggestions for the as the boogie boys last night, but I do thank you all for listening. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh for your presentations. Um, I have one question for the second speaker. The three first presentations did not have any control group. Uh, and the second speaker, you had a retrospective Syria. Can you draw uh, the conclusion that you actually draw from this uh, study design? Uh, no, we didn't use a control group. Um, the nature of our work is that we are a private clinic and ethically we couldn't obviously charge patients to come to our clinic and give them no treatment or treatment that we didn't expect to give a good result. We use the same treatment throughout the entire four weeks with everyone. 
in your age range, you included uh, some subjects with very aged subjects. Yes. Uh, more than 50 years of age, or yes. what was 60? Uh, we went up to 76. All right. How many of these people were in the group? And if there was a difference uh, in the change of the ATR in this group, age group, compared with the younger? Uh, yes. We, the only age range that we broke it down into, we did an analysis of uh, patients aged 65 plus, and they <coughs> showed statistically and clinically significant changes in their results as well uh, in the analysis that we did. And I believe that they saw results of reducing by 3.2 degrees in their ATR, so it's still group affected as 65 years plus. That was on a study of about 22 patients. The second question is, you have a surgical group, and you <coughs> show an improvement of ADR in this group as well. Yes. Uh, how can you explain that? To be honest, physiologically, we did not expect to see those results. We included the patients because we didn't want to exclude them from the study for no other reason. We put them in there, and we saw the good results. Honestly, I couldn't explain to you exactly why that is. Potentially, the only thing I would suggest is that maybe we were seeing a <coughs> decrease in rotation above or below where their fusion surgery point was. But other than that, I can't really shed any more 